In this video, you're going to learn in 30 minutes everything you need to know to mix a song from start to finish. Hey everyone, Joe here. When you first start learning to mix music, I know it can be overwhelming, but not to worry, we're gonna take things step by step. I'll explain everything as we go along. There'll be plenty of visual aids and I'll be taking you through a mixing session and guiding you along the way. This is your first step to becoming an audio pro. Now, before we get started, a quick overview of what this video is going to teach you. In part one, I'm going to explain exactly what the purpose of mixing is and what you're aiming for when mixing a song. In part two, I'll explain how you should approach a mix, and then I'm gonna give you a full overview of how to mix a song from start to finish, whether that's your own music or if you're mixing for another artist. And in part three, you'll find out when it's time to call a mix finished, and I'm gonna give you the tools and resources you need to boost your skills further. It's really important that you internalize the ideas that I'm gonna teach you so that you don't have to actively think about it when you're mixing. You'll just know what the song needs to sound good and you can use your brain power on making creative decisions. Once you've watched through this video, you'll of course wanna put what you've learned to good use by mixing plenty of songs on your own. I do recommend watching through this video before each mix, at least for the first few mixes you try out on your own. So you can keep these fundamentals top of mind. Then as you do more and more mixes, it will become second nature to you. So make sure you're listening on some good headphones or speakers, put your phone on silent, and let's learn how to mix music. Part one, what is music mixing? So what is music mixing and what are we aiming for when we mix a song? Music mixing is the art of balancing and enhancing the sound of multiple tracks of audio that make up a full song and combining them into one single audio file. Whether the song is made up of all recorded material or samples or synthesized instruments or a combination of all three, the fundamentals remain the same. I'll be showing you a mix session in part two and we're going to be mixing solely in the box, which means that all the mixing is done on the computer in a digital audio workstation software with digital effects plugins. This is the most common way to mix nowadays, but some studios do still opt for mixing on a hardware mixing console. What are the mixing objectives? As I said, you're aiming to balance all the instruments together and enhance the sound. In balancing all the tracks, we're making sure that everything's heard the way it should be. Uh, nothing's too quiet, nothing's too loud. In enhancing the sound, we're making the song more exciting, more orally pleasing for the listener. And together, you're aiming to convey the mood, the emotion and the performance of the song that the artist intended to the listener. You could be working on a fantastically composed and performed piece of music, but if the mix lacks dynamics, if it's too harsh, if you just can't really hear what's going on, the listener's going to tune out, they're not going to enjoy it, the intention of the artist won't be put across and it's the, the mix isn't going to stand shoulder to shoulder with other better mixes on streaming services or on the radio. What exactly are we balancing and enhancing though? According to Roe Iyazaki, the mixing process can be divided up into five main domains. Frequency, stereo, depth, level, and time. Whatever you're mixing, you'll be working within these domains, focusing on these five areas to make your mix sound balanced and sound great. Let's go over what each of these domains are exactly in the context of what you hear. The first domain, frequency, refers to the audible frequency spectrum, from the bass frequencies or the lows to the treble frequencies or the highs. Human beings can hear from roughly between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Our music will generally contain frequencies from all across this spectrum, with some instruments being more rich in certain areas of the spectrum. For example, a kick drum would likely contain more low and low mid frequencies. When you mix, it's your job to create balance in this domain by using equalization or EQ plugins and other tools. This is to ensure that everything has its own place in the frequency domain to keep things from getting muddy and from being masked by other tracks. Also, a balanced frequency response tends to be more pleasant to listen to. That's not to say you have to keep all of the frequencies across your mix at, at the same level at all times. Uh, it's just about preventing things from becoming overpowering. There are no set in stone rules when it comes to mixing, but keeping this in mind will set you on the right track for achieving tonal balance in your mixes. The level domain is all about getting the right balance of perceived volume between the tracks in your mix in relation to one another. I say perceived volume because even if your meters are saying one thing, 
your brain could be hearing something different. How your brain perceives loudness depends on multiple factors. Um, the room you're listening in, the, the your ear sensitivity to different frequencies and so on. That's not to say every track needs to be the same level, it's about getting each track uh, at a relative level that's right for the song. So for example, your vocal track is probably going to be a little bit louder than your backing vocals. Uh, if you're if you're mixing electronic dance music, your kick is probably going to be a little bit louder than most of the other instruments. It's all about getting a relative balance. You'll also be considering the overall level of the mix from start to finish. So you're going to want some dynamic change throughout the song. It does depend on, on the song itself and on the genre but normally sort of chorus sections and things are gonna be a little bit louder than verses and so on. You'll also need to avoid the overall level of the mix getting too loud as it can cause distortion uh, when your track reaches that zero dB mark on your DAW's uh, meters. In the mixing process, you'll be making use of compressors and limiters to get levels balanced, as well as the main faders itself and also other plugins like EQs and reverbs can actually affect the levels of each instrument as well, which you'll come to see when we get to the next part. The stereo domain refers to where sounds appear to be coming from across the stereo field between your two speakers. Generally you want to keep a nice balance across the stereo field with neither the left nor the right speaker emitting significantly more volume than the other one on average across the song. Making use of the full width of the stereo field can be very powerful in again giving each instrument their own place in the mix. In a typical rock mix for example you'll often find the lead vocal bass and kick drum will be panned centrally or equally from both speakers and other instruments such as rhythm guitars, cymbals and backing vocals might be panned to the left or right. This can help to avoid masking and it can create a more interesting and exciting mix, especially if you have different things coming out of different speakers um, throughout the song and things moving across the stereo field and so on. But again, there are no set in stone rules when it comes to mixing. This is just typically what you're gonna be aiming for. The perceived front to back depth of the mix can help us to make certain elements stand out. It can place our listener sort of in front of of the music so to speak uh, it creates this this perceived sense of space and it can help to affect the listener's mood by making use of reverb and delay effects you can affect how close or far away instruments seem to be level and panning can also affect the listener's perception of depth and lastly the time domain which involves the length of the song itself and the sections of the song as well as the individual notes which can be affected by reverb and delay so now that you know what mixing is exactly and what you're aiming for when you mix music, we're going to learn exactly how to put that into action. How to achieve balance, how to convey mood and excitement, how to mix music. Before we dive into the mix session and I show you the mixing process in action, I'm just going to briefly touch upon the two approaches to mixing that you'll be using when you mix music, macro mixing and micro mixing. Macro mixing is where you'll be mixing the song as a whole. You're listening to all the instruments together and making adjustments and mixing decisions based on the tone and balance of the mix as one. Micro mixing is the separate treatment of the individual elements in a mix. You'll be soloing tracks and listening to instruments in isolation and considering how each element of the song should sound individually and making isolated adjustments. When you mix, you'll be mixing using both of these approaches, but if it sounds a bit confusing, not to worry, you're not gonna have to remember all the terminology. I'm just getting you in the right mind Set and as you practice mixing, it will become second nature. Now, without further ado, let's jump into a mix session where you'll see and hear how to put these theories and practices into action. Mixing in action. So here we are in a mixing session. I'm gonna show you how to mix from scratch using the six step mixing process that I teach. I'm mixing in Pro Tools, but what I'm gonna teach you applies to any door. So if you're using Cubase, Logic, uh, Studio One, whatever you're using, it's gonna be the same process. Uh, I'm going to stick to stock plugins, the ones that will come with your digital audio workstation uh, for the most part, just to show you that you, it's not all about buying lots of expensive plugins. You can get a good mix with, with just the stuff that comes with your DAW. So I've got all the tracks loaded up into the session. It's quite a, a small mix um, just to show you the process. It's a, an acoustic song by a band called Soapbox Preacher. It's very well recorded, which is really important uh, that you're going into a mix with good material because if, you, if your material is sounds bad to begin with, you're going to be off to a bad start. It's just going to make the mix a whole lot harder. And before you start applying plugins and things like that, you want to listen to your song and think about the artistic direction you want 
to take the song in? What's the mood that the artist, whether that's yourself or, or another artist, what's the mood that you want to convey with the song? Is it a loud, punchy, bombastic song? You want to hit the listener hard with it? Um, is it more of an ambient piece? Is it, just what, what, what are you going for? And think about other mixes, other songs that you like the sound of. It might be worth bringing one of those into the session alongside your tracks. Uh, and you can use it as a reference track to give you some some direction and guide you with, with your sound. We're going to start the mixing process now and the first step to the mixing process is set up and prep. Now this step doesn't take long at all but it's really important that you do it, it's really important that you don't rush it um, because by setting things up correctly in your DAW it's going to avoid any friction uh, that you might face when you're actually mixing. You don't want anything to, to ruin your flow state um, you don't want anything sort of getting in the way while you're mixing. So we're going to set the session up. We've got seven tracks. We've got vocals, backing vocal, two acoustic guitars, um, two pedal steel tracks and a bass track. So the first thing we're going to do to set up our mix is set up some buses, uh, auxiliary buses that you can send tracks through, uh, you can route them through. Now whatever DAW you're using that you're going to be able to do this um, it's just going to look slightly different probably going to be in the new track option um, we're going to make three buses first three stereo auxiliary inputs have those always on and then the first one is going to be the mix bus so that bus is to send all of our tracks through basically before it hits the master fader. That means that we can make changes to the mix as a whole. Then the next one I'm going to use for the rhythm guitar and then the third one for the pedal steel. And you know what, I'm going to make another one for the vocals actually. And then as you can see I've routed those buses into the mix bus. So when I play now you'll see everything's going through the mix bus and then I've done the bass guitar separately because that's uh, on its own. So as you can see, everything is going through that mix bus so we could make changes to the mix as a whole. Now we've got that set up, I'm just going to colour code things. Um, so at a glance, they're just easier to, to sort of see what, we, what we're doing. And then I'm going to set up a couple of effects buses as well. Now if you're familiar to mixing, you, you may use uh, effects buses yourself or you may just like to put the effects on the track itself. So if you want to put a reverb on a vocal, you'll just put a reverb plug in on the vocal track. Um, but I try to avoid doing that with, with certain effects, particularly reverb, and we'll go into that um, when I show you the mix. But for now, I just want to uh, encourage you to set up a couple of effects buses right from the start. So as you can see, I've set up three effects plugins down there. Uh, just got a typical plate reverb chamber and an analog delay. We'll do some tweaks with those as we go along. But now we've got everything set up and prepared, it means we don't have to worry about setting up things um, while we're mixing, while we're in the creative process. But now it's time for step two, which is levels. All we're doing here is uh, moving the levels up and down, making sure that everything's a good relative level uh, between each of the tracks. Like we said, the level domain. What we're going to do in this step will get us pretty much 75% of the way there to completing the mix as a whole. It really is that powerful because once everything has the right sort of relative level between each other, as we were talking about uh, earlier with the level domain, you'll start to hear how the song is supposed to shape up to be. So what I want you to do is just play the song. If it's a short one, you can play it from start to finish. Um, it sh this this step shouldn't take more than sort of 10 minutes or so anyway. Uh, and then we're just going to balance the levels, bring things down mostly. Um, it's better to bring things down that are too loud first rather than bring the, t the things that are too quiet up because it will keep things from getting overpowering and clipping the master fader. So let's just play it from, from the middle where we've got everything everything in. Now that pedal steel is too loud, I'm going to bring that down a little bit, both of those. Maybe the vocals are a little bit too loud compared to the backing. Stick on the bass. 
Okay, so we can hear everything. Nothing's overpowering another track. This is pretty much where we want things to be in terms of levels. If you've got a much larger mix, it's going to take longer, of course, uh, and it depends how things are recorded. If something, if one of your tracks has been recorded really low or too loud, then you'll have a little bit more work to do in this step. Now on to step three of the process, micro mixing. This is where we're going to be focusing mostly on individual tracks, getting them to sound right within themselves, getting rid of unwanted sounds, things like that. Now these uh, these steps are fluid. We can go between them. We're not just going to be uh, doing micro mixing on step three and then never soloing a track again. It's, it's it's fluid. You don't want to be confining yourself in that way. It's just I recommend starting with this step. So normally I'll start with the rhythm and the bass instrument. So in this case, I'm going to be starting off by soloing the bass, having a listen and having a, a, a think about what it needs and what it doesn't need. So let's just solo the bass guitar. And then I'm going to open up an EQ plugin, just using the stop plugin here. Now on almost every track, you're going to want to use a high pass filter. A high pass filter is, you could also call it a low cut filter. Um, to be more clear, you're, you're cutting the low end out. Now this, you might think this is a bit strange with a bass guitar, but we're only going to be cutting out up to about about 30 hertz. I'll listen to that uh, and we'll make a couple of tweaks. But below around 50 hertz it, it is pretty much just low end rumble. Um, it, it doesn't offer anything to the mix. It doesn't offer anything for your ears and we normally don't need it, especially in, in an acoustic song like this. So have a listen to the difference. It almost makes no difference. You're not losing any of that warmth um, or the bass, but it's gonna get rid of some of that very uh, low end sub bass energy. There's something around the low mids or the mids that I don't like, a kind of nasaliness to the bass and we're going to take some of that out. And I've taken about three decibels off of around 160 hertz as well. It's just tightening up that low end. Removing what you don't want at this stage is more important than, than adding more of what you do want because you'll find that when you take out, out these frequencies, it will start to put more focus on, on the frequencies you do want in there anyway. Uh, one thing I will I will point out is when you when you are cutting audio, it's going to ultimately make it quieter. As you can see, the output there is lower than than the audio that's coming in. So we're going to match that by by uh, changing the output slightly. Because we've already already balanced the tracks, we don't want. Uh, what, what our EQing to change the, the level balance of the song. And it makes it easier to compare between the two. So we can have a listen now actually between the two. It's just a nicer tone. It's, it's warm. It doesn't have that kind of nasaliness in the mid there. Most of our tracks are going to need a compressor on them as well. If you're not sure what a compressor does, it reduces the level of of the harder notes, the uh, the louder parts of the, the track, uh, and increases the overall level. So it smooths things out basically, as you'll see. If I hit play, you can see everything that's going over that threshold, that orange line, is getting reduced by about by around minus 3 dB. We don't want it to be pushing quite as hard though because too much compression is, is going to start taking out the, the energy of, of the performance. So sort of just, just grabbing those peaks and then I use the makeup gain to bring it back up. I'm showing you the basics of how the mixing process works here, but I go into much more detail in other videos, which I'm going to link for you at the end where I mix a song from start to finish. You'll see exactly uh, all the changes that I make and why I make them. But for now, I'm happy with that. And then I'm actually going to add another EQ. So if we copy that first one and just uh, reset that, because I want to boost the bass a little bit and I want that top end to bite a little bit more as well. So let's have another listen. At around 60, just to add a little bit of warmth, just a couple of decibels. And then bring the overall level down a tiny bit to match it. 
Okay, now I'm going to move on to the rhythm guitar. Let's take a listen. I'm going to go for the channel strip for this, just so you can see the different plugins. This has the EQ and the compressor built into one, one plugin. So what I've done with the acoustic guitars, I've gone for a very subtle compression um, with a soft knee for a gradual reduction in level, uh, a low ratio as well, which means it's not going to be pushing the volume down too much. It's very obvious with acoustic guitar if you if you over compress it, uh, and we don't want uh, the the nuances of, of the guitar playing and the, the the dynamics to be destroyed. Then I've made a little cut right up here. Uh, around 8k because that particular recording is a little bit heavy on the kind of you can hear the plastic pick on the guitar strings it's a bit much so I reduced that a little bit and on the other one I've given it a bit of a boost at around 3k just to give it a bit of brightness it doesn't have that same same issue with the pick on the strings I'm going to pan those now I, I mixed them in in mono to begin with because I wanted to make sure that they stood out from each other in mono so that it wasn't just a case of that I, I could hear the, the difference between them because of the panning and um, it's a good idea to mix in in mono at least initially for your micro mixing then pan them so let's go 50 50 and I'm the, then going to use the mix bus here to pass both the guitars through uh, a harmonic saturation plug-in Kramer tape gives it a kind of analogy feel to it now a lot of doors do come with a tape simulation plug-in Pro Tools doesn't so I've, I've bought bought one from Waves but um, you know, you can mix without them. It's just, I think it will work well in this particular mix. Let's take a look at the vocals now. Lanabelle Fortune was born as the storm hit the ground. So it's a really nice vocal sound. It's nicely recorded and performed. Let's get that channel strip up again. Oh, oh, oh. Well, time slips away. So what I've done with the vocals here is I put a little bit of a harder compression on. You can normally get away with a bit more compression on vocals and we want them to be nice and smooth. Um, I've boosted up a bit at the top just to give a, bright, a bit of brightness to the vocal. Then with the vocals I want to put them through a de -esser. and what this does is just reduce the sibilance, the high frequencies on the S sounds. It's time for step four now, which is macro mixing, where we're going to listen to everything together and we'll probably be making some changes based on how things react with each other. Now, again, these steps are fluid. In, in the micro mixing stage, I do recommend going uh, unsoloing and listening to things together. And we're probably going to be going back and listening to things in silo in, in the macro mixing stage. But just for the sake of this lesson and um, to show you the different techniques, I've kept things in quite an ordered process. But I'm just going to have a listen now, make a couple of changes and then explain what I've done and why I've done it. So I made a few changes there. I reduced the threshold on the bass. I think with everything in, we can get away with a little more, bit more compression and it was it's dynamically played, which is nice, but um, it was kind of a bit overpowering when those, those harder notes are played. Uh, I've brought the pedal steel up a little bit and the balance the vocals. I've added a bit of tape saturation onto the two vocals as well. I've also brightened up the rhythm guitars, a uh, little boost around 4K on the rhythm guitar bus. I'm going to apply some reverb now. Most of the tracks are going to have reverb on um, to give it a sense of space. Now if you remember from the beginning we set up a couple of reverbs there on our uh, auxiliary buses. So all we need to do now to apply uh, reverb to the vocals for example is find that bus which is say chamber for the vocals and then we can choose how much of that we want to send to the reverb bus so let's solo that oh, 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 time slips away. Oh, oh. 
So this is the really nice thing about having your effects on a bus. You can really easily dial in however much or as little as you want. And it means you can make changes to the reverb and it's gonna affect all the tracks that are using that reverb, which keeps things cohesive, makes it sound like everything's in the same room. So I'm gonna apply reverb to all the tracks that need it and make a couple of tweaks to the reverb itself as we go. Oh, 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 the time slips away. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's really starting to take shape, the mix. Um, I like the balance of the reverb between all the tracks, but overall it was a little bit too much, so I just brought down the wet-dry control on the reverb itself. And step five is automation. Now, if you're not sure what automation is, it's where you can change and basically anything that you can set. So uh, settings on a compressor or an EQ or panning or volume, you can use automation to make those settings change as the song goes on. There are a lot of ways that you can use this. You can use it to make changes like increase the volume on choruses to sort of draw the listener in and make them stand out. You can use them for certain interesting effects in different parts of the songs. And don't worry if you're not remembering all these steps by the way I'm going to share with you something you can download for free at the end of this video that will help you um, to remember them as you mix you can use it as a reference and also of course this video will always be here but just thinking about this song and what we can do with automation firstly there's this little section here uh, where the, the guitar plays on its own So with that on its own, um, just on the one guitar, it's a bit harsh, uh, just in the left ear. So if I highlight that bit and then go to pan, I can actually just bring the panning down to, well, just bring the panning in a little bit on that, that part there. Every step takes you further away. Yeah, it's a little bit less harsh. Another thing I want to do with automation is actually from that last, that big section at the end that references the title of the song, I'm going to lift that up in volume a little bit. Now, there's a huge amount of things that you can do with automation, but this track doesn't need a huge amount. Again, I'm going to share a, a full mixing series with you after that has a full video on automation that has a lot more, um, lot more tips and, and ideas for you to to use automation in your music. At this stage, I'm also gonna do a little bit of uh, mix bus processing, which is where we can apply thing, apply plugins to the mix bus to affect the mix as a whole. So I'm just gonna have a listen to one, some, some busier areas of the song, and I'm gonna apply a bit of compression to the track as a whole. Now the last step to the mixing process is just where we listen to the song as a whole and basically see what it needs and be making a few tweaks in terms of the balancing, uh, might be making a few tweaks to the sound of the reverb itself and yeah just putting on those finishing touches and making sure we do listen to the, the full song as a whole so we don't miss anything. Time slips away On the night that the thunder broke free from the cloud And I left town with the rain Now let's hear what the song sounds like without any of the plugins on and compare it to how the mix is now. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Yeah, you can hear everything more clearly. It's got a lot more space to it. We've considered all the domains, um, made the song sound more exciting. I mean, the the before that you heard ha even has the, the panning and the levels uh, intact to the changes that we made there. So if we listen to a before and after without the, those changes, um, it would have been even more of a, a stark contrast. Now I'd say that mix is about 95% there. I could probably spend a little bit longer making a couple of extra tweaks um, before it went off to mastering. But for the sake of this video, I just wanna show you the process, the thought process and 
and, and the actual technique that you'd use as you go through a mix. Now we're gonna talk about how to know when a mix is finished and where to go from here to continue your learning. Part three, when is the mix done? It can be hard to decide when a mix is complete sometimes. A good rule of thumb that I go by is if you feel that you're making one step backwards for every one step forward that you make, it's probably time to call it on the mix and move on. When you're just starting out, it's important to mix as many songs as you can to build up your skills. I don't recommend sitting and stewing over a certain mix for hours and hours, making tiny little tweaks here and there. It's best to just call it, take a break, move on to the next mixing session and you'll start to hear some very rapid improvement as you mix more songs. We're just about wrapping things up now for this 30 minute lesson, but before you go, I just wanna give you a few pointers on where to go next and how to continue your learning. Firstly, download the free guide linked below. I'll put it together for you to download and keep as a reference. It goes through the six step mixing process that I teach. It will help keep you on the right track and stop you from becoming overwhelmed and, and help you get those mixes finished. And as I said, you just wanna keep on mixing. Even if you don't have enough of your own music to mix, there are plenty of free multi-tracks available online. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can download some. Uh, you can ask on Reddit, you can ask on Facebook, Facebook groups, places like that where you can literally just offer, offer a free mix. There are plenty of small artists out there who'd be happy to get a free mix done and it means you get some practice out of it too. And while you've learned the basics today, there are plenty of other tips and tricks for you to learn to help to bring your mixes up to a pro standard. I've got loads of videos on my channel that will help you, particularly the mixing a rock song from start to finish series, which I'll link below. And there are some other great YouTube channels that will help as well. I'll also link a website below that allows you to upload your mixes for others to critique, which can be really helpful. Uh, in improving your skills, knowing where you've gone wrong, as long as you're happy to receive a little bit of criticism. Leave a comment below, let me know if there's still anything you're unsure on or you want me to expand on, I'll be happy to help out. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna carry on learning mixing. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.